This is a late as fuck stream. Like, I, I took a nap before and totally fucked up my sleep schedule. So I have no idea how late this is gonna go. But it's, uh, it's time to continue the playthrough of Yakuza 0. Played a little Quake the last time, but it's, I want to finish this game. See so you here. Slash Halen. I, I also forgot what I'm supposed to do next, but I'm sure the game will guide me properly. Dick Togo fan, what's up? Jacques. Cygnus. Sid. Satan's Pekka. I think I gotta do. Oh, wait, oh, I had just gotten that mini game. This mini game here. Where I'm running the, the Hoor Club. <laughs> what's up, Riddler? And very nasty. Oh, man. I was... The funny thing is, too, so with this TikTok ban, I, I was talking about this last stream, too, where I wanted to do more short guitar videos on TikTok. If, if you missed it, Trump said he's banning TikTok. I don't know if that's actually going to happen. He said it might happen as soon as Saturday. Being tomorrow, I think? I don't know. I have no more sense of time and space. Is, am I about to recruit her? You're getting recruited? Um, uh, well, you are. Yeah, you could do pretty good, huh? Hey, hey girl. Wanna be, uh, one of my pro who is? Cabaret Club. If I- Oh, I gotta get- That's what that store is for. But yeah, I was going to do, um, some more short guitar videos on TikTok. Because there's some songs that- I don't want to do a full cover of, but there's riffs that are cool that I would like to play. I, there, there's a man standing here, and I can't go to him, but he looks like he's behind the invisible wall, but it's not, not for me to interact with, with his sandwich board. Alright, so I gotta start buying presents and shit, huh? Um, what's up, Oro the Villain? Oh, what store do I gotta go to? Erotic videos. Mmm, yummy. <laughs> the masseuse. Wildly popular disco club. Right, that's the one I gotta go to. The buy who who of recruitment presents. Beat up some purple men first. But yeah, so... Trump is supposed... He said TikTok's getting banned. Um, I, I see some people arguing like he doesn't have the authority to do that and it's not gonna happen. I don't know. But I was gonna record short guitar videos. And I'm not... not I, I mean, I'm not gonna put it on there for like, if there's any chance it's gonna be put down. What sucks is, I had those guitar- I've already downloaded them. The, uh, the guitar videos that are, like, duets with people, where it's kinda like, uh, like, alright, so I kinda suck ass at TikTok. But there's one format of video that I've been enjoying making, and it's kind of the guitar play-along thing with, um, with things that, like, normally wouldn't have music. Just, like, finding funny places to fit in parts with the guitar music. I had, like, I had a Ricky Berwick one that was pretty good. Um, that dude with- that always has the clown filter. Oh, you look indistinguishable from the other one, but... I can't recruit you. Um... But... Yeah, I mean, what- that I- was- what I was going to do after I got more recorded was just kind of put them all together. And stick them on the second channel. I'm probably gonna do that with the ones that I have now, just because it's like I have them. So uh, I don't know. Just gonna go buy one of everything. Oh, he, never mind. We got a porn shop. Well, not a porn shop, a pawn shop. Um, but I'm probably still gonna deal with the ones that I do have. Um, I just do, like, a little guitar TikTok compilation thing. Uh, I mean, I get... I get the mentality of, uh, why... Of, like, wanting to ban it. 
and not just in like a like a big brain that's like oh we should ban tiktok because it's a stupid app because <laughs> uh, like that's like so even though like yeah i like a, I, I have no special will towards tiktok because i suck at it um but there's like this kind of uh this like pseudo intellectual undercurrent of tiktok hate where it's like oh if i say i don't like this app it makes me intellectual and there's there's people who have that kind of mentality. Uh, it's it's very uh, what's I don't know what the what the the term to explain that kind of mentality of like oh the things the things I consume or dislike reflects on my intelligence. Like you're putting on the it, it's kind of like the intellectual version of a dude who grows a beard and starts dressing up like a lumberjack and he thinks that makes him like a a tough masculine guy. Like, you're, you're putting on the superficial traits of something because it's how you think that thing is supposed to be. So, uh, by, so to a lot of people, just be put it, like having this like strange uh, dislike of TikTok, think it makes them intellectual, and they can just... I mean, that goes like so much further than that. Like, I had a friend who thought that liking Big Bang Theory... Like, they liked Big Bang Theory because they were smart enough to get it and everyone was hating on Big Bang Theory because all the the all the, the brilliant science jokes in Big Bang Theory were going over everyone's head. That, that's a similar kind of mentality. What's going to be interesting to see, though, is how people who made their their platform on TikTok, how they transition to other platforms. It's a, it's a very distinct style of content creation. Uh like it, that doesn't necessarily translate well what back and forth. Like pretty much the only YouTuber I've seen make consistently good content on TikTok is Rusty Cage. Like he just kinda like it it just kind of clicked with him, I guess. Dragon can be used to craft Alright, I guess I'm going to hold on to that. Craft, 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 craft. I don't want to sell my crafting items. But I just don't want to be, I don't want to be carrying around a bunch of crap either. Alright, so, Schlorite. Why do I need an alternate name for the, the Tourmaline? So it could also be Schlorite. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, that's what's probably going to happen. A lot of the people are going to... I mean, I don't know. I'm not so clear on um, what the actual transition for people from Vine to YouTube was. I know Jake Paul and all those kinds of people, they went to vlogging. But I don't know if there was kind of an interstitial phase when they're still making uh, Vine-type content. I will sell the fish. I don't know if I want to want to fill my entire inventory up with Hua presents, though. See, things like TikTok, too, I feel like part of why they wind up getting so popular is because it becomes a place where people are kind of able to grow a platform from nothing. Like, you can, you can still do that on YouTube and things like that, but it's substantially harder than it was but all things being equal it's not as hard it wasn't as hard on t at least like tiktok earlier on now that's another thing another thing too uh with Vi like uh, tiktok being a bootleg vine wait oh we can recruit her i don't know if i want to recruit her she's kind of she's kind of whack I think. I'm not super into the Ralph Wiggum hair she's got going on. You know, say maybe some people might be, though. But yeah, they could actually... If TikTok goes away, there will be demand for a thing like this. In which case, I don't know if people will go back to Byte. Which was popular for like a day. Um... Could bring Vine back. Could have some other, a total other thing pop up. 
at the end of the day, too, you know, China blocks all our fucking social media apps. So, you know, in a way, fuck them. <laughs> you know, like, if, if you, uh... Oh, you are China, you want to keep TikTok in, in uh, the good old US of A? Let, let us have YouTube there. They actually, they have something... I, I don't remember what it's called. They have something that's kind of like Chinese YouTube. Um, Chubby Emu used it. He's the one who showed it to me. I forgot what the fuck it's called. But, oh, I remember the side story here. That creepy looking at the kid guy. They changed his face. The, that, that Chinese YouTube type thing that he showed me. It had like some pretty cool features that YouTube didn't have either. Like, you know how SoundCloud... Um, you can comment at the timestamp. Um, you could do this on the Chinese app. I, I forgot, I think YouTube at some point said they were going to introduce something like that, but I haven't seen it so far. Um, one thing on that Chinese app though, when you do the comment at the timestamp, it actually shows up on the screen. So if you want to watch it like that, it does get kind of annoying. But, I mean, it would probably be even more annoying if you look at it because I, I don't know how to read any kind of Chinese, so... Yeah, the timestamp comment to me, it does seem su like such a logical feature. Might be true, but oh, for crying out loud. Come on, man. Come on. Come on, man. I don't know what Biden's catchphrase over there. Come on, man. Yeah, what's up, egregious facker? Hi, mistress. You scared <laughs> What? Hey, kid, you want some candy? <laughs> Listen, fat. Oh, God, Instagram comedians. Any... Any... Short form internet comedy that involves a guy like that's Instagram comedy. The thing with uh, you got the one guy in a character and the same guy on the other side of the screen wearing a slightly different outfit, being a different character. That is that is the lowest form of internet comedy. I hate people fucking love it. That kind of shit gets millions and millions and millions of views. I fucking hate it. <sighs> Thanks for sub, fat pussy boy. Fat bu excuse me, fat bussy boy. You guys still like e-bussy shit? I don't even remember what the fuck- Like, what, what was the e-bussy? Like, electronic bus or something? I just remember the fucking name now. And then I'm like thinking, it's like, uh... Whatever company named their bus, the e-bussy. I think it was just like an electric bus or some shit like that. They definitely named it that, knowing that, like, that it's like the butt pussy bus. There's no way they had that name, never thought to Google it. And we're like, hey, everyone's gonna, everyone's gonna laugh. Everyone's gonna laugh at the name of our fucking bus. They knew that shit. They knew it was, uh... It, it was something that people are going to tweet about, be like, Oh, I can't believe this bus is named the, the E-Bussy. It's fucking 4D chess. Yeah. Moving forward. Oh, 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 I thought it was, oh, I thought it was butt pussy. It's boy pussy. Uh, I'm not, I'm not part of that whole, um, fucking men's assholes world, so... I don't- I fucked up the terminology a little bit, so I apologize. <laughs> Why are there Yakuza watching me talk to children now? But yeah, they definitely named it that knowing it's, uh, people think they could talk about boy pussy. And... And they're going to tweet about it. And I hope, moving forward, companies get bolder with their naming of objects like that. Because they'll see what a great success... Oh, well, I don't know if it was a success. People talked about it. That doesn't mean anyone's going to spend a fucking dime. 
That's the thing, too. People talk about, oh, all publicity is good publicity. Not necessarily, because that kind of it requires you to actually do something to capitalize on the publicity, which most people drop the ball there. Thanks for the sub, Riddler. I have been waiting for you, Majima. The time has come for me to initiate you into the Komeki ways. I ain't looking to do anything of the sort, old man. I mean, you literally do look like a guy with a bunch of time to kill. We're running around helping a guy with a... with a fucked up face reunite with his child. That's not a thing busy people do. Thanks for the sub, Limo. Komeki Warrior Arts. Whoa. With his fucking Hitler goatee. We got the hype train going, guys. Oh yeah, I'm doing another Warzone stream. Uh, with Andrew and Crinkles. I don't know if Muda's coming on tomorrow or not. Possibly. I haven't played Warzone since the last time I played with those guys, though. So, it's gonna be bad. I'm gonna be bad again. Alright, ability. The base of ability. Yeah, oh, I really haven't spent much money at all on my abilities, huh? Thanks, Drew. Um, I actually, I was worried about the purity video because I felt like a lot of people were just going to be like, oh, I know all this already. But I wanted to, that's why I wanted to, like, focusing more on the, uh, the story, the actual crime story in there. Because I feel like a lot of people, like, they didn't really pay attention to what was actually on that old website. It was more just about, like, knowing the shit with, um... Just, like, kind of, like, knowing how the story with Slipknot went down. Like, just like that. That it happened. That there was a lawsuit over it. And not, like, really what the story was about or any shit like that. Essence of a thug. How do I feel about Yakuza 7 being turn based? Damn. Oh shit. Kimono friend zone coming in with the party of 33. What's going on, guys? What were you I saw you guys tweeting about it before. What were you guys playing again? Oh, you were doing crazy taxi, right? I only ever briefly played crazy taxi. Let's do it. Hitler goatee. Jets at radio. Dude, I'm so hyped. On that... Fucking, um, the jet that I forgot what the fuck it's called, like beat fucking something or other. All I know is that Hideki Naganuma is involved in it, and it's basically a spiritual successor to Jet Set Radio. I almost called it Elite Beat Asians, which is a totally different game. Ah, oh, damn.
Oh, there we go. Kick him in the belly. I was on spawn cat. Oh, new thug style move. Occurred to you during your bout with Komeki. This precise strike is unleashed after a quick step. I was on spawn cast, yeah, a while ago. I imagine those guys probably had a lot to say about those Nintendo leaks. The, all I know is those Nintendo leaks. I, I fucking need to see Earthbound 64. I imagine... I imagine that, I mean, from what we're seeing from those leaks, they're probably, if, if, if it's around, they probably have it backed up. Nintendo probably has that shit saved somewhere. Yeah, Nintendo leaks. Um, kind of surprised. I'm surprised there's anyone that doesn't know about them that would be interested in them anymore at this point. But a bunch of old Nintendo prototypes from the Super NES and Nintendo 64 got leaked. When I'm pressing triangle, then X. So there's like a weird chicken leg Yoshi. That's the early version of Yoshi. Why is this only working some of the time? Because I gotta do it faster? Oh my god. Yeah, Jet Set Radio was originally for Dreamcast. And then they put the sequel out on Xbox. I think they did some kind of remix at some point. Ugh. Yeah, they... I mean, I don't know. People didn't like the sequel to it. I like the sequel to it. Um, I know they changed the mechanic with the graffiti. I think they put those graffiti mechanics back into that spiritual successor game of uh, Jet Set. Hideki Naganuma has one of the uh, the most ridiculous Twitter uh, presences too. Like he has that. I don't know if it's him running the account or not. If it's a just or so gimmick account someone else made called uh, "Is Hideki Naganuma horny tonight" or something like that, and he just actively responds to it. That's that's still. Uh, well, fuck. What's the name of that fucking game now? I gotta I gotta look it up again. That fucking game. Because I keep on almost calling it Elite Beat Agents. That's not Elite Beat Agents. It's, um, what is it? Da -da -da. Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. That's it. That's the game. <laughs> Hell yeah, and as I'm looking at it... Oh yeah, there's just like some porn star responding to him. If one person says confirmed Hideki doesn't I just gotta look at this this thread again. Oh yeah, so 
Someone asked him if he eats ass. He says, as, he says, no, confirmed, Hideki does not eat ass. His response, ass is not food. Some porn star responds to him, mine is. <laughs> and then he just, he just responds, I'm horny now. Get out of here. His response, I'm horny, I can, you can't even, it's out of focus. Like Robin Williams in that Woody Allen movie. But... Just hard eyes. I'm warning now. He like you know what it is. He, I like, I'm really curious how much English he knows. He's because he seems like very self-aware of oh like some kind of cultural gap. But I imagine he mostly like knows English. But it it, it, it it's almost I guess like the overall story arc of Twitter for him. It just seems like this like this Japanese dude that's fallen down into the world of American. Uh, English language, at least, a shit posting, and it's one of the best follows on Twitter. Got some kind of fight as clairvoyance. Just came to while I was watching you move. Is all evasion strike. What's up, Titan? Oh, wow. Let me learn something else, Hitler Beard. Later, Snazzy. Next, what's up, that chub? What's up, real fajita? New thug style move. Successfully guarding with heat gauge at first four cars as heat gauge to rise. And you are not staggered by anything but knives and bullets. Oh uh, yeah, Chubbs, like I, I I I don't know what it is. Like it's just I guess I don't promote the stream that much on YouTube itself, which is where most people see me. What's up, Drakina? However, the bout is not over. But it's, it's weird, like sometimes we'll pe fi people will find me promoting it through Twitch. I mean, through uh, Twitter. Sometimes people will see it uh, on the front page of Twitch. Or, you know, suggesting to people shit. Like, people find me on here all kinds of random ways, I guess. What, have I ever thought about doing a video on Cicada 3301? No. I fucking hate most ARGs. So I probably will not ever do Cicada. I've had a lot of requests for Cicada. And it doesn't interest me in the slightest. Marcentios. I mean, first off, I mean, I just, in ARGs, I generally don't find the puzzles to be terribly interesting. Um, and then, what bothers me about a lot of ARGs is that thin veneer 
of it being, oh, this is really real. When every, everything an ARG does to convince you that it's a real thing is so obviously fake that it's just really corny to me. When, what, what, what makes them even more annoying to me is that I'll get so many people who email me or message me trying to get me, trying to trick me into believing their stupid ARG is real. And they'll be like, oh, hey, you should do a video on this weird YouTube channel that I found where, uh, I don't know, they're posting all these creepy videos and there seems to be some kind of code in it. Isn't that weird? You should do a video on it, but I bet it's something really interesting. Oh, yeah, I'm sure this isn't your ARG that you're making up, guy. E either your ARG or, like, someone else's ARG that you're getting tricked by. Or the, the alternate to that one is, uh... Oh, I just found this really weird subreddit with creepy posts and all kinds of secret codes in it. And all the posts, I can't see what they have to do with each other. This is so weird, you should check it out. I bet it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely not my ARG that I made and I'm trying to use your channel to promote my bullshit. It's, uh, a real thing that I found. We just we just know this is a sub story without even having gone into piss. Um, I don't think this is the one with the wrestlers. I think six is the one with the wrestlers. Yeah, I mean, what I started doing that show, like I've had um my Twitch link. Oh, I don't even remember if I have anything. I tend to not put links. In the description, because that kind of fucks you up in the algorithm of people leave YouTube on your video. I'm a very lonely. We're gonna... Wow. We're doing bathroom Twitter here, guys. Um... But yeah, I started putting at least the, um... In that little, like, intro bumper. I started putting, uh, the Twitch link in there. Or the Twitch name in there. Hey. I, you're wearing purple so I know I could fight you if I just go like that. Hit me so I can power up and hit you with a bike too. Bash your head in the wall. How far am I into the story? I don't know. I don't remember what chapter I'm at. Seven, maybe. Thanks for cheers, that chub. Where does it even say so? Oh, chapter seven, a dark escape. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I have heard of Jew Wario. But, I never, like, really looked into his story.
He was like a, what was he, like a, like a Channel Awesome guy or some shit like that? Never watched Channel Awesome. Most early YouTube stuff, I just, I did, I like, I didn't get into YouTube early on. Like, I honestly, I watched almost no YouTube until I started using, you started like making YouTube videos. Cause I would just see these, like early on, I would see these YouTube videos and would just be like, this is like the most like try hard, like, you know, like when it, when YouTube was just starting to, like, get past the stage of music videos and, you know, weird cat videos that people, like, started being, like, YouTubers, my response, my feeling about that was how people kind of feel about TikTokers now. Like, I would see early YouTube stuff and be like, this is fucking cancer. Why would I watch this? But, what, like, the, the end result is that I kind of... I didn't watch a lot of YouTube, so like now people are like, oh, like why wow, you know about internet stuff, and they'll like bring up this and that YouTuber, that that'll be like a very famous YouTuber, and I will have no idea who they are. Like Vega, if you guys know Lord Vega, he had that YouTube game show that was kind of like YouTube trivia. I was supposed to do one episode with him, but there was just technical issues throughout the whole thing. But I was like, dude, like I don't know shit about YouTube trivia. No need to worry about me. Let's get started. Alright. What's it is it? Escape from an enemy grapple and launch a counter attack. Oh, let me guess, he's not gonna grab me. Who's my favorite YouTuber now? I'm trying to think. There were a few videos that I kind of, uh... I'm sh there was like one YouTuber this week that I just kept on getting the videos recommended over and over again. Um... Shit. Oh, you know what it was? I had it on autoplay, and the way that sometimes YouTube will just automatically send my autoplay to Joe Rogan eventually. This week, it was doing it to Scott the Waz. Like, no matter what I started out watching, I would eventually wind up at a Scott the Waz video. Mindscan, do people even watch vlogger YouTubers, really? Frantic throw. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know, I'm sure vlogs aren't doing the kind of numbers that they used to. And that's why you find a lot of, uh... You find a lot of vloggers have kind of moved on. <laughs> Even at some point, I was doing some vlogs with my band when we were doing stuff. But then it's like, why am I, why am I spending time, like, trying to, like, build the vlogging portion of that? Like, people don't even, like, watch vlogs much anymore. And it's also, like, I, because I was the one that, like, kind of, like, knew how all that stuff goes together and shit. 
I would be, like, something fun would be going on, and it would be like, oh, well, I guess I gotta, like, uh, record it now, so I can't really pay attention, I can't really participate in what's going on around me, because I'm the one recording. And it didn't really merit a budget of paying someone to go around. Game chases are good. I, uh, I wound up watching a few old episodes of theirs not that long ago. Yeah, it's, it's like, it is hard to... Oh, this is the one here. Wilder, watch. French wallet. Yeah, like, you gotta have, like, some crazy gimmicks to get someone to watch a vlog. Like, you're not gonna... Unless you already have a massive, massive, massive audience. Then people might kind of watch once to see how you live. But to get people into it, you gotta... Definitely have something a little bit more. It makes me think of how the other day I saw this Twitter thread talking about how influencer culture kind of fucked up Instagram. Because if you remember Instagram when it came out, it used to just be this kind of unsorted whatever the hell. Like you just have you just have a picture of anything. And those ugly ass filters and those ugly ass frames. Actually, I only just realized the the other day that they don't have those frames anymore in the filters i act, i want to do like some shit like that after i read that thread i wa i was like you know what i it, it's not like i like do a lot on instagram anyway so i kind of like what am i gonna like put any amount of effort into making sure my instagram feed is like nice or anything um so i'm like i want let me just put up a picture a random picture of my fucking dog with one of those shitty old frames, and I'm like, wait a second, the frames aren't there anymore. I put it on manually. But, like, what influencer kind, culture kind of did, is it turned Instagram into, like, a much more homogenous thing. Where it's kind of like you realize that whatever, the main things that are going to get a big engagement on Instagram are these, like, nice looking professional. I don't want to call them modeling photos, but I guess that's kind of, I mean, trying to be modeling photos, I guess, and that's kind of, you, you know, you open up Explore on most accounts, and that's kind of how it looks. It's not, it's not as, it, it feels very overproduced to what it was before. I don't think Instagram went to shit after Facebook bought them out. I mean, it's, I, I feel like... If you didn't know that Facebook bought them out, you wouldn't have been you wouldn't be able to set a date to when the change happened. That also being said, I remember um people swear that it it would be so much better on Instagram if they brought back the chronicle for the well the chronological the chronological timeline. It fucking wouldn't be and like the argument over that it makes me realize how much people think, how different people think their behavior is from how it actually is. Because the Instagram algorithm, it shows you things based on the kinds of stuff that you actually spend time with and interact with. So all the, all these posts that are coming out that you think you're missing, and it's like, oh, Instagram's not showing it to me. It's stuff that you never interacted with before. Historically, your behavior has demonstrated that you don't care about these posts. So you, you, the only reason you think you care about them is because you know that you're not seeing them. If you didn't know that you weren't seeing them, if there were no timestamps or anything, then you wouldn't miss them. With that being said, I, I mean, I, and also that's that, that that uh, mentality, that, that algorithm. That's why that influencer culture has kind of managed to shift the platform in such a way over the years because that was the kind of content that was getting interaction on there. So your your picture of... W w in your Nashville filter picture with a frame of, uh, you know... Uh, what do I got over here? Oh, here, look at this. Here, look, look at the... If I just post this picture, I'm like, here, look at this face mask that I have. In, Na in Nashville filter, it's kind of a garbage post. But it kind of, it, it breaks up the homogeneity 
of how Instagram is. So it's kind it's kind of like there's basically a small amount of kinds of posts that will get engagement. And now it's all like people kind of worked into a, it, it, it'll, it basically whittled down to the kinds of things that will get engagement because like that's just the kind of stuff that interests people. Huh. Yeah, there is a, a period of time when uh, Instagram, uh, I'm not in a period of time, sometimes it happens, uh, where if you interact with a lot of tattoo artists, um, then you'll get nothing but tattoos. I think the uh, the algorithm actually changed in some kind of way where tattoo stuff was getting less interaction in general though. Like I kind of I noticed that shift away at some point. And actually one of my tattoo artists I was talking about that he kind of noticed that his uh at some point of couple like in the past couple years or so his interaction like dipped off dramatically. But then also you get people who are like trying to be Instagram influencers like they kind of noticed that their interaction dipped off a bit and the explore page isn't as powerful as it used to be i guess any platform any platform that has an algorithm though there's all kinds of tweaks like even on my channel from time to time on youtube um they it, it it's you can you can tell right away i can tell right away on my channel that something has changed um with how youtube sorts old videos because I have the kind of I have the kind of channel where it's uh, the content it's like evergreen content it's not like a news channel or anything that's kind of dependent on being current so you can go back and watch an old video and it'll be fine but because of that you, you'll notice phases where YouTube is pushing old videos more than usual like, I'll, like, a few months ago, YouTube, maybe not even a few months ago, relatively recently, YouTube was pushing old videos really heavily. Like, I would open up YouTube, and my front page would be, like, three-year-old videos. And during that time, I would notice my old videos were getting a lot more views than they used to. So you could tell there's, like, they've been experimenting with different, uh, age... I don't know what you would call it, like, decaying age on videos. I also think, and that being said, on YouTube, I feel like a lot of times when people complain about the algorithm suppressing them and shit, it's, uh, a lot of times, it's not the algorithm suppressing them, it's that people just aren't watching that shit. Like, I'll still have my cum jar video hit suggested sometimes. I'll still have the two girls, one cup hit suggested sometimes. I'll get suggested views on videos that are demonetized. So it's not necessarily that that sort of content gets suppressed. I think Mudahar actually had a video somewhat recently about that. Um, I mean, there definitely is some correlation between demonetization and whether or not you get suggested, but it's not a one-to-one -one overlap. But I'll see shit. Um, that it... I'll, I'll like a lot. A lot of the times, you'll see a thread about the algorithm pop up on Twitter, and you'll get all these YouTubers whose channels aren't doing well, um, think it's the algorithm suppressing them, and you go look at their channels, and it'll be like some, it'll be like some like stepped out of 2016 political content with a fucking animated avatar that's barely even fucking animated, and and like my quality that sounds like it came off my old Packard Bell computer. Um, and, and basically just uh, giving a political take that 8,000 larger channels already gave. And it's like, oh, you think the algorithm is why your channel's not growing? And not the fact that, you know, it's 
Like, you're just essentially doing a worse cha version of shit that 8,000 other channels that already have an established audience are already doing. Also, sometimes, I, some people also just do it, and they know. Some people are dishonest about it, and they kind of just do it to grift. They would be like, hey guys, uh, YouTube is suppressing my channel. Uh, give money, please. That's the thing that happens, too. Oh, he need me from behind because I couldn't see him. You fuck. You green jacketed fuck. Drink it. Drink it. It's good for you. Yeah, oh, wasn't it? Okay, Samuelson, wasn't it Bill Mitchell that did a tweet like that? Where it was, it was like I think I'm shadow banned. People aren't seeing my tweets. Don't respond to this. So I know people. I forget, it was some like weird. It, it was some kind of boomer not understanding what the fuck is going on with this account. And but then all the replies are like, no, I saw your tweet. I just don't care. <laughs> oh, you know what? Let me advance with the story a little bit. As much as I, I love the uh, the the, uh, the lovely world who's been crafted for for us here, don't give me a tissue. It's money, big money, boy. Oh wait, there's a card here too. Is it back here? It is. Wow, that's pretty fucking funny, uh, Case Samuelson. Asking Bill Mitchell, the conservative boomer guy, about his fucking Donkey Kong scores. Did he respond? I can see Bill Mitchell responding, like, not understanding why he's being asked this, but actually having a Donkey Kong score that he knows. Billy Mitchell actually, uh, the Donkey Kong guy, has me blocked on, um, on Twitter. I had someone ask, like, do you want me to ask him to unblock him? I'm like, I don't, I don't, no, I don't really care. I have, I have no designs on interacting with Billy Mitchell that I need him to be requested to unblock me. Oh, he is on Storyfire. Actually, alright, so Storyfire, if you guys don't use Storyfire, Storyfire has a, a point system called Blaze. But it, it's kind of like this weird, like, um, currency that's within the platform. And there's a Blaze leaderboard, so I'm like, yo, all I know is, if Billy Mitchell gets to the top of that Blaze leaderboard, I'm gonna need to see a videotape. I don't even remember what I said to Billy Mitchell. I don't necessarily know that I'm honestly... I might be blocked by Billy Mitchell because I follow Tipster. I, can, I actually found Tipster's channel when he was, um... When the, the, the original Billy Mitchell cheating story arc. Um... That's how I found Tipster's channel. So he might have just blocked everyone who followed Tipster.
The Lord of the Night. Yeah, Tipster Bull Black. Oh, it's up to Bull Blacks. Uh, Tipster has like this weird. Uh, there's like a, f a like a little gang of people who hate Tipster. It's fucking weird. Like there's like that hot tub guy or <laughs> the the hot tub guy really fucking hates Tipster. I, I don't remember his name, but I remember seeing like the hot tub video. And, and then, uh, I think it was the same guy, like, he, there was a guy who made, like, a 40-minute fucking video, I think it was the same guy as the hot tub guy, who, it was basically a 40-minute video of him being mad that Tipster didn't cover a topic he wanted him to cover. Which, that's like one of my biggest pet peeves on YouTube, when people get mad that you didn't cover something they wanted you to cover. Like, that's, when I used to do more, like, topical type stuff, that was one of the things that, like, was kind of like, you know what, fuck this, I'm just focusing on the internet and gaming stories. Because those things are, A, so much more interesting to me, and people aren't going to try to rush me to, like, talk about whatever they're upset about at the moment. I remember that being, um... You remember, uh, that, the Asian guy that got dragged out the airplane, it was all fucked up. Uh, it was a fucked up story, like, they, they hassled him on the airplane, an old man, he was, like, bleeding in the picture, getting dragged out the airplane. And people wanted me to make a video on that topic, I'm like, what the fuck kind of video am I gonna make about this? Oh, this, this guy... This guy, this bad thing that happened, I think it's bad, too. There's, there was already, like, 30 videos on the topic. And I gotta, like, make an, another one to say the same thing with my voice. But that's a whole cottage industry of YouTube. It's not as much as it was before, though. It, it, I feel like there's not as much of those channels as there used to be. Or if there is, there you don't see them as much. But that, I kind of, I, like, there's, like, people, for some reason, I don't know what this is, this is just a part of the human condition, I guess. What's up, Tutus? A part of the human condition where we want somebody that we... If we come to trust somebody, we want to hear them say our opinion back to us. Because it makes us feel validated. Like, it's all oh, this guy that I think is smart thinks the same thing that I think, so that makes me smart. I feel good about myself because he said it. There's there's so many YouTubers that you can watch, and you know what their opinion is going to be, but you watch it anyway, because then it's like, oh, they said, all right, good. They, they said the good opinion now, and now I'm satisfied. It's all, it almost feels like kind of like this like weird religious thing where you open up the prayer book, only inside the prayer book, it's the correct opinion on today's topic everybody's mad about. I'm glad that I failed miserably when I was trying to be one of those channels. Because I'm way happier doing the kind of content I do now. I thought it said fap, but he said lap. Earn some. Let's earn some green for Mr. Money Bags. Tonyoka. Oh yeah, I for oh that's I forgot about the money throwing dude. Here's the thing about Bo Blacks. Bo Blacks gets shit because it's like, oh, you just read tweets. The thing about Bo Blacks reading tweets is that he doesn't just read tweets. 
he consolidates all of the tweets around a relative relevant topic into the same piece of media so if you're like hmm, i want to know what people said about this thing you don't have to go on twitter and search for all the interesting tidbits and shit it's just here it is all in one spot so it's more it's providing more value than just reading the tweets he's he's um cataloging the cataloging cataloging the tweets on the subject and there is value in that all right let's let's throw some money around That being said, I saw the the clip of uh I, I didn't see the clip, I saw the screenshot. I don't know what Hassan was watching Boblax's channel for, but that screenshot is great because like it's just you just see Paul Boblax's channel pulled up, Hassan looking at something on there, and this whole chat just be like, This guy's voice is so annoying. And it's like, damn. It's like Is it because he's Canadian? Or is it, or is it, or is it because he's uh, autistic and it's, they're being ableist against his autism? Let's go. Sot in the buddy. Yeah, it's like a hundred bucks. I think, wait, 10,000? No, it's, yeah, it's like a hundred bucks you're throwing. シハイニー。すみません。よろしいですか。どんなギャグや。どうも日本人じゃないようです。多分中国人の What's up, a bike thief? I think I would guess it's short. It's a word for it, but ragged. Can't be Lee then. Who in the hell is it then? Uh, let's see this short, ragged fuck. I will say one thing about TikTok going away. I, I think, and honestly, I think it sucks that it is going away, or it might go away. Like, it might just be like something happens tomorrow, and Trump is like, that's not what I meant, and it doesn't go away. Um, but every social media platform, I kind of, if I have it, I feel an obligation all of a sudden to make something for it. So I get stressed out, like, man, oh, I haven't put anything on TikTok. In a little bit, even though I barely use it, then like I don't, like people don't follow me for my fucking uh, brilliant TikToks. But uh, it's still like that, that that nagging in the back of my head where it's like you got you got to make something. That's good. That's good. I guess that goes away. It, it would always be the weirdest TikToks that blew up too. Like one of my most popular TikToks, I'm just looking at the pixel in the background. Where I discovered that I could make him sound activated. So it was just me with the Doom guy. It's moving its mouth as I say I can do this. And it got like 70,000 views on that TikTok. Meanwhile, the guitar ones that... Everywhere I post the guitar ones, people like those. They'll get... Those will be some of my most popular posts on Twitter and Instagram. They're just like re-uploads of those TikToks, but on TikTok itself, those videos always flop. Not a single fucking one did well on TikTok itself. I, d I just don't grasp that platform. Here's the thing though, if TikTok gets banned in the US, the Canadians will still have it, so we're, what's gonna happen then? We're gonna have this hotbed of Canadian entertainers pop up through TikTok, and then the face of YouTube, if they graduate to longer form content, in the way that, like, there's so many commentary channels that are British, 
We're gonna wind up with like an in with like the Canadian wave of YouTubers, like five years from now. Yeah, that's it. You're gonna you're gonna be fine, Bo Blacks. You're in Canada. Uh, it's like tomorrow, tomorrow I'll convince Mudahar to make a TikTok. Just because I can't do it. What if Donald Trump is working on his own TikTok alternative and that's what this is all about? We love lip syncing to other people's dialogue, don't we, folks? That was the worst Donald Trump impression in. In history. Jesus Christ, that was so bad. Big strong man. Man, I would love to sit around a hostess club right now. But not just, you know, do nothing. Nick, like, Nick the Oriole is tweeting about four, like, how, uh, if, we, if he goes to VidCon next year, he's gonna have a pre-cut video to drop on someone during VidCon. Which, I mean, it's a little, like, it, it's like taking Willy Mac one step further, because Willy Mac dropped his I'm Alex video, like... The day after VidCon, so Nick the Oreo is taking that up a notch. But then I'm, I'm reading that tweet, and I'm just thinking, man, I, I VidCon next year. I mean, yeah, it's a year from now, but will we we all be just living in fucking pods by then? Like, is this it? We're just we're just like human interaction is over forever now. And that's how it feels. I also I didn't pay attention. I didn't know where I'm supposed to go now. First for the head. I mean, I guess that's it. Um. Yeah, like you know, I kind of feel bad because tomorrow, well, this weekend, I was supposed to be away. Now it's supposed to be Atlantic City right now. It was gonna be my friend's bachelor party. He like, oh my god, he picked like the unluckiest time to have his fucking wedding, man. Um. But we were going to have a bachelor party in Atlantic City. Um, you know, get a hotel. Or just like, be a good time. And we were even, like, talking tentatively. Like, you know, let's let's just do it. It's open. Um, the numbers are down here in New York. But then like, it became a thing where it's like we can't, like, risk everyone's safety. Um, just, you know, go to Atlantic City and have a bachelor party. So... He made these plans to do virtual, like, meetups and shit, and, like, I kind of, I opted out. Like, I feel dick, but, like, honestly, all these virtual hangouts and things like that, they're making me so miserable. They're making me, like, I remember the, um, the, the lockdown first happens, and I'm getting invites to, like, virtual raves and all these, like, virtual, like, oh, we're gonna hang out on the internet just like it was real life. And you would think a guy like me, you would probably expect me to be into that thing, but to me it's just sad and depressing. Like, I would rather just live like a fucking monk until this is all over. Like, even... And they they have like approximations to it. There's uh, like they're getting like a virtual blackjack table. Actually, I also I, like so I like to play blackjack. That's usually my go-to if I go to a casino because if you do make all the mathematically correct choices in blackjack, you have the house only has like a one percent edge of beating you. And every time I played blackjack like that, you know you. You quit while you're up, and you can walk away, and like, I've basically, like, I would be on tour and double my money, and just, you know, use it to eat for that week. But, if you have a time limit for that, it doesn't count as counting cards. In fact, a lot of times, uh, Loop, the dealer will help you do this. Like, if, if they see that, like, 
especially like people who are new they'll kind of like give you hints at like what you should what what moves you should be making sometimes which is why you should always tip your always tip your dealer if you have money left to tip at the end at least <laughs> um but oh yeah this is gonna be a, a battle for a uh, breakdancer for sure Um, but yeah, like, being constricted into, like, a one-hour time limit for Blackjack, it kind of, it changes that strategy that I would have, where it's like, oh, well, now I'm locked into the time thing, so if I'm, if I'm up significantly early on, I might, you know, well, I'm here, we have the time limit, so I might wind, oh, he has guns, alright. I might wind up losing it all. But then it's like, you just, you just go in, like, with enough, with less money, an amount of money that you don't, you're not concerned about losing at all. Oh yeah, let me get this gun motherfucker out. What the fuck? This seems a lot less controllable than it was before. Gambling streams do really well on Twitch, too. I haven't seen... Like, I see them around and shit. I think it's more so poker, which I'm not very good at poker. But it comes with time, too, poker. I don't, like, people who are good at poker, they play a lot of poker. So they have, like, a... a a better idea of what everyone might have, which is what's the key to the game. Oh, yeah, slot machine. That's the thing, too. Like, poker, like... it's There's more complexity to getting good at poker. Blackjack, you can learn the odds in Blackjack very quickly. Like, you can, like, they have... There's a table you can look at. And... Obviously, like, being good at blackjack, it's not as good as being good at poker, because if you're good at poker, there's a lot more upside to it. Um, but it's definitely more accessible. And if you're if you're a slot machine, slot machines, you're just a sucker. Like, you're just giving money, and it'll, like, pay out one person sometimes, but... It, your odds are you're not getting shit at the slot machine. So do I. At least that wedding I'm going to, though, it'll be an outdoor thing. So, like, that can happen. And it's like, oh, I'm not, like, oh, there's probably some people who are having, like, a virtual wedding. Can you imagine that? That's so depressing. I, don't, I feel like, like I've, I've never been a person who really had to deal with like mental health issues or anything like that. But I'm, I feel like I feel myself like taking steps to like just improve my mood now that it's like really starting to drag. Like I, you'll saw I like do streams where it's like all of a sudden I'm like dressed up like I'm gonna go out, and it's just like you know every day like not dressing up because you have nowhere to go it's kind of uh it wears on you well i was chilling at the beginning of this whole thing because uh because i'm used to like not going out that much but then it's like all right come on i want to do something Oh, yeah, something I fucking hate too, about the about, about just like the whole thing of blackjack. If if someone like you know how I said there's like always like a mathematically correct move in blackjack. Some people like if there's someone at the table that's not making the correct moves, they get super butthurt. Like oh, well, now you fucking us all up because we're not getting the cards we were supposed to get. And it's like, yeah, that's true, but that can work either way. Like, you might get a card you weren't supposed to get and may and win because of it, or you might lose because of it. It's unless you're counting cards, 
it's not making a difference in an appreciable way. Hell yeah, Tristan, thank you. I appreciate that. It's you again. Time oh, damn, it's almost four. Yeah, my schedule is all fucked up now. I, I took a nap. I see, I was like stoked. I woke up at like a good time in the afternoon. But then I, I got home and I was tired. And I wound up waking up from my nap at 8 p.m. So um, this is going to be a fucking disaster. Yeah, like, there's this thing people say at Blackjack, where it's like, oh, everyone on the table is playing as a team. Thanks for the sub, Karthik. Like, you're... Like, it's, it might feel that way, like you're playing in a team because you're all against the dealer, but you're not playing as a fucking team. This is like, this is like idiot, mathematically illiterate gambler logic. Unless you're, unless you're counting the cards, which... Unless you're like some Rain Man super genius, you're not succeeding at counting the cards at these fucking places. Like they'll have a million fucking decks that they keep on shuffling. Like, I'm, like, I'm honestly, I'm getting, like, frustrated now thinking about, like, stupid people I've met at blackjack tables that are getting, like, worked up about that. Like, a good example was, like, and this is one, like, it's very clear in my head. There was this guy, I, I forgot where it was. It might have been in, like, Detroit or something like that, where they have those tables. But there is a guy who was a blackjack dealer and his girlfriend sitting at the table with us. And his like the the guy who was a dealer he was making all the right moves and he kept on losing his girlfriend kept on making the wrong moves but winning and then there are other people at the table like getting pissed that she's like doing the wrong thing and the dealer is trying to like you know do like be like all right so like you got lucky but like mathematically you're like way against the odds here but then they're getting butt hurt and like wh when they she's making these weird these strange moves and when the other people at the table are winning I mean, like this wasn't affecting me in any kind of way because I'm like sitting at the other at the like the first seat at the table but uh, other people are getting like mad fucking butt hurt at her when they lose on a hand and she made a weird move but then sometimes they're winning too so it's like it's like do you not understand like that like what like I said if you're not counting the fucking cards it doesn't really matter what moves the other people are making thanks for the uh thanks for that thanks for the bits Olive Oliver Sp I almost read that as Oliver spice but it's Oliver's piece like in effect if if that happens, it affects you in, like, a butterfly effect kind of way. Like, if... If if I... Like, that kind of blackjack mentality, it's like... If I get hit by a car... If I walk outside and get hit by a car... And that car just happens to be stopped at a stop sign longer than it should have been... Because someone was crossing the street... It's like saying the person who crossed the street caused me to get hit by the car. Yeah, 
give me some money, motherfucker. You pompadour ass fuck. Hold the up, you good up. Why are you laughing? That wasn't funny. Tristan, I think there are PC versions. I think Kawami. I think the. Like, I think. Actually, I think they might all be on Steam. I'm not sure. There's some of them on Steam. Damn, I, I really just gave 10 million yen to this guy that's playing his guitar on the side of the road. Honestly, the one that I want to play the most is 6 of all the Yakuza games, just because, you know, it's got the wrestlers in it and it's got Kitano in it. All the cameos that I really want. Mozumi Hazuki. All the cameos that I really want... Um, but it's going to be a while before I get there, because I set out to play this in order. And we're on zero still, so. You look like, you look like a schlub that I can talk to. No, he's just the regular NPC. I thought he was some, some sad sack that was going to give me a quest. There is eight, right? It's going to be Yakuza Seven will be the ninth one, I think, right? Well, no, the, no, Yakuza Seven will be the eighth one because they got the zombies one. All right, let's do something about this injustice. I haven't played Metal Gear Solid 5, but I think I have it. I think I got it on PS Plus one month. Do it. Oh, I thought he interrupted my hit. Hell yeah. Get down there. I don't think I saw that one before. Well, speaking of Fist of the North Star, and them goddamn Japanese mangoes. So, alright. I finally got around to watching JoJo. And, alright, the first few episodes of JoJo, I was like, yo, this is fucking awesome. And then, it starts to drag, real, in my opinion, really drag after that first story arc. I don't know if it's just me. Like, now he's, he's like, doing his fucking, uh, Hamon powers with the fucking Top Hat guy. And I'm like, this is kind of boring. And apparently, though, I'm, from what I'm seeing, a lot of people who like JoJo share this opinion. And they said, like, I've seen a lot of people saying that JoJo doesn't get good until the third part. But, like, why would I watch something that I gotta watch, like, three, two parts of to get to the part that's good? When there's so many other things. There's, there's more stuff in the world that I could look at, then I have time in life. 
Like, I could start right now and, and try to watch everything that's good, and I'll die before I run out of things. So why would I watch two so, watch something that doesn't get good until a third part? I don't want to watch two parts that are bad just because it makes the third part good. I'd rather just watch something entirely different. That's like, I quit Final Fantasy XI mad early. And people were like, Oh, I, I, you, you gotta like stick with the game. You know, it's boring at the beginning, but it gets good. And I'm like, it's, if Final Fantasy XI takes time to get good, why don't I just play something that starts good? Hell yeah, Andrew. Gonna, is Muda, is Muda playing tomorrow? What's up, Rukulin? Yeah, like this game. This game is good right out the fucking gate. Well, Andrew, I woke up at 8 today, so I I don't know what's happening anymore. I took a nap. I woke up at 8, so I don't know what time will be good for me, but I'm assuming around 8. I don't know when I'm going to wake up tomorrow. Hopefully not 8. I wanna play as the Chinese guy. He looks mad cool. That happened to me with World of Warcraft, too. Where, well, World of Warcraft, I enjoyed at first. Then I started to hit that wall where you kind of, you got to party with people. I don't want to party with people and do all this other stuff. And then people are like, oh, it gets way better once you get after that hump. And I'm like, I don't... No, I'll do something else. And my life is probably better for having not getting into World of Warcraft, so I guess. Hmm. とにかく、まことんとこ行くときは用心するんや。ハモ。さっきグランドの前で絡まれとってやろ。お前の素性は言うべ、まことさらに来たヤクザにも割れとる。どっから見られとるかわからんでいい。なあ。I don't know, like, maybe I'll give Jojo another try. I'm up to the episode... I'm not that far in. I'm up to the episode where... They resurrected those knights that got tricked into... Getting executed, and they resurrected them and they fight Jojo. But I'm watching this episode, and I'm like, this is so boring, I don't care. Slip through on notice. <laughs> Man, this is just like that other mission, isn't it? That guy, he's Sagawa's watchdog. At least I don't have the blind chick with me this time. Oh, really, dude? Right now.
What's up, Optic Watermelon? Yeah, actually, like the part where they kill the dog, I'm like, oh, this is crazy. Now I am invested in the story because he killed the dog. And now, now they're just like, he's playing some, playing with water with some swarthy Italian man. All right. Rukulin, don't make me tap the sign. Bookshelf by the door. Oh, that, oh, that's a bookshelf. The thing is, about the dialogue though, like, I don't care if something's dialogue heavy, but the dialogue has to, like, a kind of add more knowledge to the story. Like, it has to contribute something, whether it be some kind of characterization, or some kind of background to the story, or something. Thanks to a sub optic watermelon. Like, people used to argue about this on- when I- back when I was watching The Walking Dead show, still. People would always argue about the filler episodes and be like, Oh, you guys just want, like, non-stop action and blah blah blah. And it's like, no, like, a lot of these so-called, like, character development episodes on The Walking Dead, they don't actually develop the characters. You know not- you wind up learning nothing new. Nothing- you wind up learning nothing that matters about any of these characters. Just because an episode is slow and they talk a lot and nothing happens, doesn't mean that it's character development automatically. Give me that shit take mushroom. And, and there's a lot of... There's a lot of useless fucking episodes of The Walking Dead. That people, like, will fight tooth and nail saying that, oh, this is character development and whatnot. And it's not character development. The characters are being developed. It's literally just stretching the series out to hit more episodes. Yeah, it's exactly Sid. It's budget development. It's it's not a character development episode, it's a fucking bank account development episode. I completely lost interest in that show a long time ago though. I will say I I kinda lost interest in the comic too. I was reading the comic a lot on The Walking Dead. And then, uh, then I stopped, and then I heard they kind of, like, they just finished it out of nowhere. They, like, uh, like pretty much, they even put out a fake last issue. I mean, they put out a fake uh, preview issue for The Walking Dead of an, of, a, of an issue that didn't exist because the one that came before it wound up being the last issue. Like, that's how you fucking, I mean, I don't know if it's an actual good ending to the series, but in concept, that's how you fucking do it. And not have people, like, have it spoiled. You have a fake issue. And then just, boom, actually, it's over. My name is Shizuka. Can I work at your club? Hey, you got a sexy look. I think you'd be really popular at our club. We'd love to have you. How, wait, these women are just wandering around by temples, trying to get recruited?
I'm hearing that, uh... This got announced a while ago. Um, the Cannibal Holocaust game. That it's being... I think it's being written by Ruggiero Diodato, who directed the original. Which, for some reason, I guess... Is this some kind of Mandela effect shit or whatnot? Um... I thought he had died a few years ago. Maybe I was confusing it with when H.G. Lewis died, but I thought Diodato had died. He didn't die, though. And he's working on a Cannibal Holocaust video game. It got announced... I think it was supposed to come out in the fall, actually. Um... But from what from the likes of the sounds of it, what maybe a little bit less excited was that I, I I think it is going to be like a Telltale's game type format, which don't get me wrong, I did enjoy the Telltale um, Walking Dead. I enjoyed the Telltale Walking Dead game, but you know you 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 just announced that you have a Cannibal Holocaust game coming, and your mind fills with all kinds of possibilities. Of something a little bit more involved, but apparently it'll just be a story-based game. I don't think they announced what the actual, uh... What the story will actually about be- will actually be about. I don't think they announced the story will be about in the Cannibal Holocaust game. Um... I do remember, though. So, if you- there is one of the- The most asshole-ish of all the documentarians in the Cannibal Holocaust was the dude Alan Yates. Kind of like the main antagonist in a way. Uh, Optic Watermelon, I'm, I'm on chapter 7. And he, it, very, it seems like, if I, it's been a while since I watched Cannibal Holocaust, but I think spoilers, like close your ears if you don't want spoilers. Uh, I'm pretty sure when he dies, we kind of see the camera like lay next to his face and you see, like you don't necessarily see him die. But it's, it's very heavily implied, like, how would this guy not be fucking dead at the end of this movie? Like, you, got, you watch one guy gets his dick cut off in the distance. Um, I think the, uh, the, the lady documentarians get taxed out and killed. Uh, but Alan dies next to the camera. But then, years later, years and years and years later, I remember, and I couldn't find this thing, but I'm sure it exists. Um, and not that it's canon or anything like that, because it's just a DVD extra feature, but I specifically remember there being like a DVD extra feature that was done in the character of Alan Yates by the original actor, and basically implying that he survived after, and I think they were kind of talking up a short or something like that to follow it up. That being said, um, oh, he gave me a, a battered iron gear. That being said, it wouldn't surprise me if the Cannibal Holocaust game wound up, uh, you know, following along the Alan Yates story, just because, like, you know, that was a kernel of an idea at some point. Actually, thinking about that now, um... There was one really funny interview with Robert Kerman, who played the professor in Cannibal Holocaust. And, like, he's, like, he's drinking out of a red cup. I'm pretty sure he's, like, drunk as fuck in the interview. And he's, just, like, talking to... The, the interview was just, like, him talking about how much he hated making this fucking movie. For, uh... I think it's like a 40 minute interview. The thing. He, 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 like. Oh, wait, maybe Robert Kerman dying was why I thought Diodato died. No. No, because I, I thought that before. Actually, what sucks too is, like, Robert Kerman died, like, the last year, I think, before the game was announced. And, like, thinking about that, it would be so cool for them to do the follow up and have him be in it. I remember, I actually had a mutual friend with him. I think he lived in New York for a time. And they were like, yo, like, if you know, like, any acting gigs and shit, like, Robert's trying to, like, get back into, into, it, get, like, get it back into working. I never got to meet him. I was, like, there was a thing I was supposed to do to, uh, like, she was gonna bring him out to this thing. And I was gonna go with them, but then he wound up getting sick. So, I couldn't go.
He had an interesting career, though. Because I think... I think he was a porn guy at some point. Well, I think he did porn at some point in his career, and then he, like, at some, did, like, a bunch of cannibal movies. Like, not only was he in Cannibal Holocaust, there's another one where he's a cop. Um, it might be, like, Jungle Holocaust or something like that, or... I... I forget, there's so many cannibal movies that are very similar to each other, and I forget which ones are which. Um... One of one of them actually, I think it's Cut and Run, has a buddy from Charles in Charge as the main character, and that one Filipino chick that was in a lot of movies like that, Mimi Lay, I think she was in that as well. But that that's definitely of all like the random people who show up in a movie like that, buddy uh, Willie Amos, buddy from Charles in Charge. Being in a fucking cannibal movie is just inherently amusing to me. <laughs> Have I seen Wrong Turn? I haven't seen Wrong Turn. That's a movie that they, they should do a sequel to uh, the, the, the Charles in Charge cannibal movie. They, you know what? They should literally make it so that the the world of cut and run exists inside charles the charles in charge universe and buddy just you know he came back from the jungle and he's like i this is i gotta get away from all this craziness i know i'm, I'm gonna uh, help my buddy charles watch some fucking kids uh lopjing what happened actually so with Cannibal Holocaust, I think the sto as the story goes, hell yeah, stab in the stab him in the the coccyx. I think the way the story goes is that the because uh, it's a found footage movie, so it looks like you're watching all this footage that's on that's been recorded surreptitiously. So it's a found footage movie, and you see in, in the footage all of these uh, documentarians getting killed. And whoever had seen it thought that they really got killed in the movie. So he, in order to not go to jail for murder, the director had to go to the Italian court with the actors still alive and well. At least that's how the story has been told. I'm not sure how accurate that is. It's actually, this is actually something I was working on for a movie idea. I want to do it eventually. But I don't think the story in and of itself is enough to sustain one video, so I might... I was thinking of a way to combine it with the, um... The, the Charlie Sheen story. The Charlie Sheen guinea pig story, because there's... Um... If you don't know the guinea pig movies, the way they started out was kind of as fake snuff films. And... Charlie Sheen got a hold of one of these fake snuff films and he thought it was a real snuff film so Charlie Sheen goes to the FBI to try to like get get to the bottom of this. I feel like combining that story with the Cannibal Holocaust story in the video is kind of the way to go for that topic. Oh, they tried to charge him, and he made the actors agree to not appear in anything for a certain amount of time after Cannibal Holocaust to make the found footage more convincing. That's pretty cool. I, I love shit like that. I, at, like, shit like that makes the wrestling fan in me happy. And it's like we're, like, we're so far removed from those days in wrestling, where, you know, back in the day in wrestling, a wrestler gets hurt. They're... They are walking around in crutches in real life. But we don't do that anymore. Now wrestlers go by their real names on Twitter. And get their own sponsorships and shit like that. Which, I mean, that's honestly, like... From a labor perspective... That's a lot more fair than how it used to be. Because, I mean, if all these wrestlers, they're gonna be independent contractors then how much say should their company have with their other business ventures, you know? But there's something, I get. but that being said, there is something lost 
to not uh, to to not having that be your whole life, where you you go out into the world pretending to be injured. Oh. Do I plan on streaming any more horror games? Yeah, definitely. Actually, so I was waiting um, well, on like getting my new PC to do this. Dread Central. Dread Central has um, a video games division now. And they put together a compilation. I think it's eight different games. But I'm going to wait till I get a new PC. Even though they're like very lightweight, sometimes it's just like I don't want a, like, a weird disaster like the last lightweight... Light, light, ugh. The last lightweight horror game that just was having problems running on my system. So I should be streaming that sometime next week. Can I dress up as Imaji? I won't. I only want to dress up like a character in this game. Now I've been playing this game. Zero of the Hero. Did I see Slasher exposed for the Britney Venti DMs? I did see that. Um, I, At first, I was like, kind of like, because I had been thinking about how hard it is to initiate. If you're interested in a girl, in, if you're interested in someone and you have a platform where people know who you are, it's hard to do because then it's like, well, if it doesn't go wrong, I'm going to get screenshotted and embarrassed. But then also the DMs, it's like, the throwing on like the job interviews and stuff like that. It's like, all right, that's kind of like, that kind of like goes into troublesome territory when you go and say shit like that to her friends. And all that being said, like, like all that being said, a guy like Slasher being into Venti, that's such a, that's you know what it is that that's like the the lefty version of the conservative guy that wants to fuck AOC. That's like that that trope has been flipped on its head with those two. What he what did he call it? In the DM he used the good term for it, uh, like a hate crush or something like that. So I would never in a million fucking years imagine a guy like Slasher being into Britney Venti of all people. Cause he's like a very outspoken left wing dude, and she is the opposite of that. Actually, speaking of AOC, I was just like I—I I, only reason I remembered that. Wait, what the? What happened? Oh. Gave her the good night juice. You know what? Actually, I understand the hate crush thing, Lofjing, because like, think like it's not so much like, like I kind of like fuck with like people like all different kinds of politics, so that's not where it gets to me. But sometimes you f you just find someone annoying, but attractive at the same time. That happens a lot, where it's like. I'll, like sometimes there'll be like you're like certain content creators uh, you're like I fucking hate this content but there's just something interesting about this girl that happens a lot <laughs> thanks for the sub Holly Duke この服着せてな。死体見つけた殺は身元確認するのにわしんとこ来るやろ。like the guy in the park. Oh no, we just beat her face until you can't tell. Okay. Oh, 
You know this guy was more than a masseuse just by how he looked cool and commanded Chinese gangsters. Did contract work for a mean landlord organization? What is Alpha Industries jacket? Is that an a, a, a legit Alpha Industries tag on there? I think so. What's up, C Bunga? Are you guys uh melting more ice cream in the UK today? I saw this clip. They're like to demonstrate how hot it is in the UK right now. There's a video of a guy with a with a ice pop melting. But the thing is, the video, it's like a time lapse. So the guy holds the ice pop there, and it takes 20 minutes for it to melt. Like, that seems to me like a normal amount of time for an icy to melt, but I don't know. Surely it doesn't take you 20 minutes to eat the icy. That's what's gonna happen. The, uh, the English, they're gonna invent... I'm saying this because I just had it fresh in my head how the English will use a single cup to hold an egg. They're going to invent a special device that's only purpose is to hold an icy pop. And 20 years from now, they're going to be like, what do you mean? Hey, gov, bruv, what do you mean the uh, the Yanks don't got their poppy whoppies? You don't use poppy whoppies there? How you you fucking ice cream then? Right, that was like five different accents, but you get my point. They're gonna be hold. They're gonna be holding popsicles with their poppy whoppies. Device just for holding popsicles, and be like, "How you yikesy ice cream? <laughs> ice cream? How you yikesy ice cream, Dad? If you got a thing, <laughs> how you yikesy ice cream? If you have a thing to eat your ice cream." Yeah, I think, see Bunka, I think there was an article like that, now that I think about it too. Talking about how hot it was, this was last year, talking about how hot it is in the UK. And it was like 90 degrees or something like that. Your ice cream. Yeah, it became Australian. How you eat your ice cream if you ain't got nothing to hold it with? I, don't know. I, don't know. I think Tipster is still banned. あ、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
生きてここから出すわけにはいかん。ああ、そう。We're no longer friends, you and I. 死ねえや、真面目 !Now on, we are enemies, you and I. Oh, he came back from that. I'm playing on normal. Oh, he's got he's got those Chinese counter attacks. Time events happening here. Oh, he didn't touch me with the grabby hands. Chinese counter attacks with a CIA operation during the Cold War. Oh, I almost missed that one. Damn, that's about to be an operation in the fucking. The hot war we about to get. The TikTok. Yo, imagine TikTok. China. Like, TikTok was such an important Chinese op that. That TikTok getting banned by Trump is what starts World War III. Can you imagine? That would be like the perfect cherry on top to a fucking Hell World 2020. The TikTok war. Stop touching me. Don't you ever do this. Ah,、oh, I already used the only object in here, huh? But what I will do is use. Oh no, I want to use the bat. Out.
tight. Oh, so you're here for trying to fight me with sandals on you, fuck. Mopery, just glad I quite stream. You found my channel while on LSD. Hell yeah, this is the perfect channel for that. There should be a guy playing a saxophone that comes out from underneath that light. That's right, smokers are jokers. Who are you, mysterious, purple-sleeved man? Where this is how normal people sit. We're sitting normal. Oh yeah, back to the egg thing. Because every time that egg topic comes out, there is like this one uh, viral thread. It might have been a couple years ago with this guy that just discovered that Americans don't use egg cups. And it was the most baffling thing to, I, to the, It was the most baffling thing to me. So I remember uh, there was some book that I read when I was a kid. And it had egg cups in it, and I was like, what the fuck is this? Why do you have a cup for eggs? And I remember that being a thing, like, we had to fill in the answers and just talk about an egg cup like it was a normal fucking thing. And I was like, it's like, alright, I eat eggs, I like eggs, but it, why would I have just a single cup that only holds one egg? And that's a, the only purpose this device serves. Thanks for the sub, herbs. Lopching, they have an egg cup, the, the the British have a cup you put a soft-boiled egg in. And then, you know, you, you open up the egg and you dip your bread in the inside the, uh, the drippy part. But then I'm talking about this, and it wasn't my viral thread back in the day, but this came up on my shit again recently. And so people are like, wait, if you don't have egg cups... Oh, thanks for that raid, Chromers. What's going on, guys? Welcome to this Oh, I just threw my money on him after I already beat his ass. Um, but then it's... Oh, you, lady. What kind of presents you... Oh, she wants leopard print clothing. Well, then it's like... People are like, what? How... How do you eat your... What if you don't have an egg cup? What happens when you get your drippy eggs all over? It's like you just you let it be on the plate. I've eaten drippy eggs before. You just let it be on the plate. It's the same way I eat. Like there's all kinds of wet things that you can eat. All kinds of wet things, and you don't have each. You don't have a single device for every single type of wet thing that you eat. Well, it's, oh, I can't eat my pizza. I gotta have my pizza holder first. What do you mean, you Yanks don't eat pizza with your pizza holder? Well, they did make that thing that's, uh, you know, you slide, you, you the plastic thing you put around your neck and you hold your pizza slice inside the pizza. They got that. The Americans do, that is. Thanks for sub, Pop Docs. I mean, don't get me wrong, like, I, th I feel like me talking about this the last time, uh, made people think I don't like eggs or something. I do like eggs, I just, 
I don't think an egg merits its own serving device. Especially if it's just one egg. <laughs> I love that the chat right now is just popping out random English sounding phrases. You guys could survive without a diddly papa? Yo, Yanks ain't got your diddly papas. That's the problem, isn't it? What do you mean you don't eat you don't eat a pubble wubble? I, oh yeah, that, that or I guess like what makes the the uh, the egg discussion, the egg cup discussion, extra heated is that you get everyone coming in. It's like, yo, you Americans don't know nothing about food, and it's like, yo, all right, don't come at me like that, saying that you Americans don't know shit about food. When I I saw that tier list, I saw that British food tier list where they had British people rate the best British food. And, you know what was in the god tier? A fucking bacon sandwich. Like, that is that is the peak of the cuisine, of a fucking bacon sandwich. So don't tell me what I don't know. I mean, don't, um, don't get me wrong. Uh, I like bacon. I like sandwiches. I, if a British guy knocked on my door... And gave me a fucking bacon sandwich right now. I would dog that shit. Believe me. But I also wouldn't put that on the god tier. Am I gonna stand up on stage? Am I gonna play the drums now? Is this what's happening? I was I was just upstairs already. Oh, okay. It was, like, in the corner here. Yeah, like, that was the thing, too, when, when the the, tier, the British tier list came out. It was like, oh, alright, so it was just, like, a bacon and bread? Wait till these guys find out about lettuce and tomatoes. It's, they're gonna have to make a whole new tier for that. It's, like, God, and then it's, like, the per you got the God tier, which is the bacon sandwich. And then you have the creator of God, which is uh, the person who, who, the person who made God, like the God, the double, <laughs> double God. Uh, I'm trying to think of what I ate when I was in England. I went one of the places I had. A, I went to like a chicken spot in England, and it was I mean, nothing I ate in the UK was bad, but nothing was terribly memorable either. Like, there is so much stuff that I ate in Germany that, like, I still think about to this day. But I think I, at some point, I, like, I had, like, a... I had, like, a burger and fries at some point there. I had Thai food there, which was, like... I mean, it's what am I expecting from, like, Thai food in the UK? But, like, I, well, I had Thai food there. It was like, very bland, the Thai food that I had there. Um... The thing is, though, like, with Germany, what I enjoyed the most about the German food was the Middle Eastern food. Like, they have really good, uh, like, donair everywhere. That's most of what I ate when I was in Germany. Yeah, but yeah, I ate a lot of, ate a lot of wieners in Germany, too. They got good wieners. <laughs> Damn, I want to go to Uva... I think Uwe Boll's restaurant had some kind of problem. I wanted to go try his wiener schnitzel. Very sad that 
uh, Uwe Ball is not on Twitter anymore. I mean, he got banned from Letterbox too. Slightly battered rainbow textile. Twitter got mad. Yeah, Twitter got mad at you because you told Bill Maher to die in a ditch. Yeah. Even if you're telling. Even if you like jokingly tell your friends, oh, I'm gonna kill you. Like, like you still get in trouble on Twitter. I think, honestly, I think most of what we call, uh, what we think of as American food, I think. Uh. I think it's mostly German stuff, like burger, like burgers and fucking hot dogs and shit. That's German shit, I think. I'm just fucking sad sack, motherfucker. Oh yeah, I gotta get shoes for this fuck. What's up, trending tech? Oh, it's rich fuck. Let's do it. Nice that whole trending tech. Amber. That's right, you sissy. Rod Roddy of the prices, right? Burga. Berger. I haven't played the Shadow Warrior games, but uh, apparently there's a character named Wang that looks like me. This is what I'm told. I think I'm thinking of the right games. Oh, Majima. Yeah, J Flop, that's right by where I live. We might have crossed paths today. Oh shit. マキムラマコトさん二十歳とみられます。遺体は損傷が激しく大阪府警では牧村さんが何らかのトラブルに巻き込まれた殺人事件であると断定。おい、お前やったんちゃうんか。あの写真の女を。俺はやっとら。やるわけないやろ。せやけどお前。死体は昨日お前が持ってた誠の服着とったで。何やと。朝店に出かけ来てな。身元確認や言うて。死体の写真見せられたんや。顔は潰されとったが。服はまず Zero, that wasn't just Destiny. That's regular Destiny. Just Destiny's another dude. People get those guys confused all the time, though. Hi, uh -huh. Mr. Ron, I have read Junji Ito's. Well, I read um, Uzumaki. I haven't read his other work. Oh, wait, he did the one with the uh, holes on the side of the mountain, right? That's him, too? I read that one. See, people get the mystery of Amigara Fault or whatever it is. 
That's hot. He is literally me. Save the game. All right, before Climax of Battles item open. Before we get to the next part, I'm going to make another coffee and take a leak. BRB. Climax of Batteries. What's up, Skulls? Yeah, Majima's moves are way cooler. And I'll find myself... Playing as Kiryu, wanting to use his moves and forgetting I don't have them. Huh? 
俺があんたから撮ったほぐし会館の制服身代わりにするつもりやった女の写真俺がそれ捨てたとこその男はどっからか見てたっちゅうことやそういうことかいなそれつこてまことの死体を偽装したんやなけど何もんなんやもしかしてお前の雇いの人ちゃうかちゃう A crazy lady swinging a stick by Palmetto. I don't, I don't think I'm familiar with this lady. There's this one intersection. It's like Forest Avenue and. I forgot what street it is. It's like Forest Avenue by the train station. And it's just like this weird like colony of like drunk Polish bums. And there used to be this lady that's always like sitting on the steps, smoking in everybody's fucking way. She's not there anymore, probably fucking died. But, uh. Always sitting on the steps, either smoking, and if she's not smoking, asking people for cigarettes. But I don't know a stick lady. Later, Optic. Go to the Grand. Yeah, I don't I don't see the shit. I mean I, honestly like the point of the lockdowns wasn't until eliminate the virus completely. It was to prevent hospitals from getting overwhelmed. So eventually, like, we're, like... I, I think whoever's gonna get it is gonna get it. And it just has to be spread out more. But I'm also at this point now where it's like, dude, I don't even fucking care if I get it anymore. I'm just sick of labeling like this. I mean, I, I used to take Ubers when I used to go places, but I don't go places anymore, so I don't take Ubers. One time, actually, what was kind of... It's kind of funny, like, one time I took an Uber to a bar, and then there's some dude... I was an Uber pool, and the other guy in the pool, like, knew the channel, which is pretty cool. Let's go. I thought I, was, I thought I had customers here. You're not customers, you're goons waiting to fight me. See, Sid, I thought that I had it already. Cause I was really, not I was really sick in January, and then I was really sick again around the time that the lockdown started. So I was like, oh, I had it. But when that time during the lockdowns, I was sick. I went to get checked out. I didn't have it, and then recently I got. I like that time I had strep throat. I don't know how the fuck I got strep throat of all fucking things. Like, that's like a disease for babies, but I had it. And. Then, recently, I got antibody tests. Um, they were just uh, giving free antibody tests at the clinic by me, so I got those. I, I, I don't have antibodies, so I've never had it. Or if I did have it, it wasn't in my system. It didn't stay in my system.
I don't know about Immortal. I also... I, I refilled my Asthma Inhaler around that time. But now I have no refills and I currently don't have any health insurance. Um... I saw this thread before. With a person who has asthma. And they have no inhaler. And like, inhal inhalers are prescriptions, so you need to... Uh... Get a prescription to get an inhaler, or you know you can't you can't get it to breathe. So the person they can't they have no prescription, so they can't get an inhaler. They're out of it. They can't breathe. They can't go to the hospital because like the doctor told them to just not go to the hospital because then you're at risk of like getting whatever the fuck. So it's like what the fuck are you gonna do then? Like you you just have to like not breathe until everything is all right again like that's the scary shit to me not like having an asthma attack and not being able to get an inhaler like that like then it's just like your ba you, it, it's like the shittiest thing like you, you could die really in my opinion asthma medicine should be over the counter so, at least, like, per buterol and albuterol, they're... Because, like, there's not cra crazy side effects with those. Like, it's not like you're, you know, filling up on fucking Xanax or something. People aren't using recreational albuterol. I think the mentality behind inhalers being prescription is that so you don't use a rescue inhaler when you should be managing your asthma, but it's uh, it's, it's like they're trying to teach you a lesson by letting you not breathe. Sumito, an internet historian, a stream in Minecraft. I played Minecraft once, I didn't get into it. Yo, Dirty Dirt, I was thinking about Hexen recently. But I only- Hexen- Hexen was a PC game, right? Because I only ever played it on Nintendo 64. And it, it had a lot of problems. Hex, I think Hexen had like the system where it was like different magic and shit like that too, right? That was pretty cool. I haven't played a medieval. I want to though. I did play uh, Dusk. I feel like Majima's story in this is so much more interesting than Kiryu's. Like, I'm way more invested in what happens here than in Kiryu's story. Like, I want to know what the deal with this blind chick is. Whereas Kiryu, like, oh, you got a clean air. Something about the fucking plot of land. Alright. 
Majima's story is way better. Oh, shit. He did that Japanese old man punch. Like, playing this now, I'm disappointed with the knowledge that after this chapter's over, we're going back to Kiryu. Yeah, that's true, Sloth Admiral. What I do like about Kiryu's story is that the enemies are cooler. Oh, this guy is pretty... He's pretty swarthy. He's, he's got it with his My Chemical Romance tie. さつも this guy kind of reminds me of Shinsuke Nakamura in a way. I think it was that little like movement he did was very Nakamura-esque. To the point where I feel like this would have been way cooler if they had Nakamura play this guy. Especially, you remember that one uh, Wrestle Kingdom entrance where Nakamura comes out with all the strippers dancing and shit? That was badass. WWE wouldn't do that. Can't hit him with the header. That same Wrestle King, they had... What was, oh, Marty Friedman played, I think it was Tanashi's entrance? It was somebody's entrance. Might have been Tanashi's entrance. Oh. Marty Friedman might be, like, the, the, the most, oh, shit. Marty Freeman is probably the most... Of every weeb who has ever lived, Marty Freeman is probably the most successful one at weebing. What the? He did his, did his Bray Wyatt shit here? Like, he was just like, yeah, I'm the guitar player from Megadeth, but now I'm just gonna move to Japan and be a mad Japanese. I'm gonna play... Re I'm gonna play... Uh, an, an entrance theme at fucking Wrestle Kingdom. I put out a bunch of Japanese albums and shit. Alright, you know what this merits? Oh, I don't have any bullets equipped in here. I'm gonna lay down. I'm just gonna... Shoot you. Steal business card. As a weapon. Danger. Dane. I don't have the ability for that. High voltage.
Oh, damn, he's dodging all of it, really, dude? I need a little candy. Oh, that's the end of that. Um, yeah, I mean, if I stream Hexen, I'll probably just do the solo campaign and I'll do, like, some, like, co-op shit. Majima. They, they gotta get... Actually, what's funny, alright, so if you're getting a lot of TikTok ads, what could actually be happening then is TikTok might have an ad buy and then the companies that have the bids on them might be like pushing them through to make sure it gets all spent before they're banned. That'd be pretty funny if that's what happened. That's like, that's like these American social media companies giving one last fuck you to TikTok. King Lucemfair. I think ostensibly it's getting banned because of uh, spyware. Shady, shady Chinese spyware. Which, actually, I think it was Slasher who had a good point. If if that's why TikTok's going down, watch out for Valorant and League of Legends as well. But if this is coming directly from Trump, Trump doesn't know what fucking Valorant is, so. Yeah, they do have the same stuff. Facebook and Twitter and YouTube. They're all spying on you. I think what it comes down to is that, like, we know. Like, the, the government can see, like, like, can tell what Facebook is tracking from you and companies like that. They can't tell. I think there's stuff in TikTok that they can't tell what it's doing. Something to that effect. Yeah, dude, Facebook, I fucking, I've come to hate Facebook. Like, everyone on, every social media has people, like, preaching and, and like, going on this, uh, how do I put it? Like, like, what I said about Facebook before, it's, the thing that annoys me about Facebook, you go on there, and you have everyone giving these fucking, sp acting like, they're giving these big speeches to of their opinions to all their friends that have the same exact opinions they do and acting like they're educating each other. Like, at least on Twitter, like, you'll find, like, like people, it'll... There'll be, like, some level of humor to everything. But Facebook is, it's like, where you give your unironic opinions to people you went to fucking school with. And it's, it's just all, like, bad content. I open up Facebook sometimes and I'm like, like, why do I still have this shit? So, それより真島ちゃんよ。お前仕事終えたら電話しろって言ったろ。仕事? 
The funny thing, the funny thing about Facebook and Twitter too, a lot of times I'll see my friends who like they use Facebook mostly and they come on Twitter and they try to use Twitter like Facebook and get zero engagement because on Twitter like no one gives a shit about those kinds of posts. Thanks to the host, Kuro Nikko Karito. Ha the character limit on Twitter definitely winds up improving the posts over what you get on Facebook. Yeah, that's the thing, uh, Facebook, like, despite all that, if you put out content, you will get a lot of people looking at your stuff from Facebook, like, stuff goes over, uh, people, I guess people are more willing to leave Facebook than they are Twitter. Like, something I noticed a while ago was, like, Twitter, like, despite how much engagement I get on Twitter. I think for the entire month of, uh... I think for all of last month, the amount of views that I got from people going to my YouTube channel from Twitter was like 2,300 views. Which is like, compared to like the total amount of views, I get like... I think it was like 2,300 views from Twitter in a month where I got like three and a half million views or something like that. So it goes to show, like, I like to convince myself that I'm on Twitter all fucking day and it's like being something productive, but it's mostly just because I like to fucking fuck around on there. There's, there's no, ever I saw that figure, there's no trick in myself that I'm like on there, like, to do anything actually useful for my life. え、<笑> King Lucifer, like, outside of a good... It's not even just that Facebook is making jokes that Twitter's already done with. Like, I look at... Outside of a few, like, good pages and groups, it's mostly just people, like, making, like, massive, serious posts about what they think about this and that. And it's fucking... Like, I, like, I don't... I don't care. I don't care. And a lot of the posts, like, I don't think they really care. They just want to feel like... Like, they, they want to feel like their friends think they're smart. Like, people, like, still think they're out here saving the world on social media. It's, you're not. You're, you're jerking off with all your friends. That's fine. That's fine to do, just don't pretend it's something bigger than what it is. I'm a Majima! Wahoo! I'm a Majima! Oh, ジョンソンの闇色。リサ、どこにいる? 
Ah, where I wish I could play as Mr. Libido. Zero the hero. I think what's happening with DSP is that he's been targeting by being targeted with fake DMCAs. So like the automated system takes them down and then they're like, oh, this is obviously bullshit. Let's fix this. Oh. oh yeah, this guy knows what's up. There's nothing stopping you from being Mr. Libido right now. Like, all you have... I mean, well, I guess what's stopping you is the fact that everything's closed. But, if everything wasn't closed, all you're going to have to do is just, you know, shave your head, throw on some underwear, and just, like, wander about. Be a party boy. They got nothing but mushrooms in these very expensive vending machines? I thought it's Japan. There should be, like, panties in them or something. Like, that's what it should be. You buy the panties from the vending machine, and then you sniff them in the middle of fucking battle to regain your heat. Yeah, it gets stimulated. Do I plan on playing Yakuza Kiwami after I'm done? I do. I might play Ghost of Tsushima between them, though, but eventually, I, like, eventually, I want to play through all the games in order. Financing. <laughs> Damn, you know what? After all that egg conversation, I could go for like a good ass omelet right now or something like that. Deal with a shared item box. Oh, okay. So I right, see what happens. Whoa, I'm good right now. Kawami. I'm going to play Yakuza Kawami. You know, I never played Devil May Cry, and I do intend to eventually, uh, play through them. Although I heard, I, is it, which is the one that everyone says is bad, is it too? Because there, I know there's one Devil May Cry game that everyone says is bad. I might skip that one, because I don't, re I don't really feel like playing through a game that people, like, just say is ass. Two. Oh yeah, everyone knows it's got it's that fucking bad that everyone immediately knows that I meant two. So I'll, if I do Del May Cry, I'll probably skip number two. Oh, let's do a uh, Sunday Shiner. The only Del May Cry that I played was a really short demo of, I think, the first one. Was either the first one or the third one? I don't remember. Hell yeah, fuck you guys. Don't get mad, you're gonna get beat it up.
There we go. Just beat him down with the bat. Are you gonna give me a plate? Give me a plate. She gave me skin. What? Why are you just carrying skin around, you fucking weird broad? Here, thank you for saving me from these men who were gonna do god knows what to me. Have some skin. Money man wandering around. Let me use what I can of this and then engage him. A little deal acquired. Hey, you. Oh, my. Ah. Oh, no. Damn, that was quick. Oh, much for that. I'm the median. It's not Guile, it's Gaidu. There is this comic book store by me that it didn't exist a long time, and I I was convinced that Guile's name was pronounced Ghoulie, because like that's I they didn't say the names out loud, so people are just like oh they they're just naming them how they name them, they're just calling him how they think it is. So there's this kid at the at the comic book store I had Street Fighter called him Ghoulie. I I just thought that was correct. What's up, Dark Ace? Well, let's do it. We we gonna have a fun night at the Hula Factory. Boost up the soil. Oh wait, I don't I didn't make any business deals I was supposed to make, did I? How do you about it though? Special training for Yuki. Senikabu. Don't sass me. You know how I could tell it was called? I couldn't, but I'll pretend I could. Take it to the zoo, Rock. Retards like the zoo. Remember that? You remember, what's funny thing is that line from Rocky. Remember that line when they're, they're talking about Adrian to Rocky? He's like, hey, chase the car, he gets all butt hurt. That was actually that guy in Rocky was actually my friend's dad. That guy that just says the line, Retards like the zoo. 
Wait, I want. What kind of sushi do I like? It's too random. I like Angalo. Um. Let's say it's too random. Take it to the zoo. So, so, so. That's right, try harder, you dummy. Yeah. Yeah. Exposed. Reading those pickup artist books. I'm gonna just gonna nag me now. It's gonna be like, hey, Majima, nice eye patch. For an eye patch that looks like shit. It's not like she said, yeah, buddy. You're working hard. Can't uh, cross the boundary. The boundary of uh, the power dynamic. <laughs> Damn. I fucked up the training. Normal lesson. Normal lesson. this list oh this one's s so uh, wait I thought our oh, p is the, like the top one So we have like the two of almost the same one now. That could be. All right, let's do it. He's poor, so we gotta give him the so so.
Only slight smiles for the poor guys. Wait, what? I thought she wanted... Wanted another drink. We get the old broad. I don't know if he left that satisfied. Like, no, uh... No, he got some kind of release there. That's how. See, I thought, like, the extend sessions would be, uh, like you want to do that for, like, the people who have more money. Okay, they do spend more money like that. Oh, damn, he's not gonna be happy with any of these broads, huh? Gracious send off. See, extended. Oh, he's like, fuck this bitch. Boredom, I would prefer it if you didn't give me even gameplay tips. It's just a mad, annoying way to play a game. Let's go. Oh, 
ありがとうございましたありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。Tucker, like, they're not gonna think you're in the, you're not, you're a gangster because you have tattoos in Japan. It's like if a Japanese dude has tattoos. Oh, yeah, it probably doesn't happen if you present yourself as being a white guy. I'm sure, like, a fucking. A weeb that goes to Japan with a fucking Legend of Zelda tattoo isn't gonna get confused for a gangster. But, like, some of them will think that's what's gonna happen. What's up, Farticus? Club of Mars. Thank you, King. Well, there's a vending machine right out here. Let's see what kind of cr let's see what kind of mushroom I get from this vending machine. I'm sure, it's gonna be a great mushroom in here. Charismatic autobiography. People are going to try to steal my book, which gives me three of each stat. Which I guess, it's better than this one. Said to give me financial luck, I don't know. I don't know how it translates into actual stats, but it's, I, I'm, I'm good to leave it on there for now. Hey, you. Chasing me through these streets. I think I'm gonna wrap it up soon. I'm getting kind of tired. <laughs>